Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this session. My name is Inam Sheriff. I am a public service development librarian at the New Brunswick Public Library Service. Today, my presentation is about diversity and inclusion in the MBPLS children's book collections. As for my diversity audit, I take a sample of summer reading club book suggestions. And this is the plan of my presentation. So I will try through this presentation to answer the question why diversity in children's books matters. And at the end, I will be providing analytical and statistical review about the level of diverse representation in summer reading club book suggestions. All right. I really like this story about these two boys who came to the library and they were trying to find people who look like them on the public library bookshelves. And, and this is the whole story. Uh, this question, like this quotation or this little story provides in a simple way an answer to the question why diversity in children's book matters. Children need windows and mirrors, right? They need these windows and mirrors to, to see the world around them and to expand their knowledge about others, about diverse population, about diverse experience, right? And why this is important? Let me take you to these figures and maybe you will understand really the importance of having uh, a diversity in a library collections, not just in the library collections, but also in the programs and services that the library offers in their local communities. So this is an overview about the diverse population in Canada. More than one fifth of Canadian are people of color. In 2016, South Asian Chinese and Black were the largest POC communities or groups. By 2036, people of color are projected to be about a third of the total Canadian population. And this growth, of course, is due to uh, increase in the number of immigration. Also, 2.2 million children under age of 15 are foreign born. That represent 37.5% of all Canadian children. Around one third of the First Nations people were in 2016, 14 years of age or younger. Bottom line, Canada becomes more multiracial and diverse. And that means the number of children belonging to BIPOC groups is growing. And by consequences, the library patrons are becoming more diverse, right? Okay. Now this is Canada's diverse population. Let's have a look on New Brunswick BIPOC groups. Okay, I'm not going to stop here just for saving time. This is the community profile of the New Brunswick population. Let's go forward to the New Brunswick BIPOC community. Sorry. So as you can see, through this table, 3.4% of the total population in New Brunswick are people of color. 4% are indigenous community or belonging to the indigenous community. Uh, okay, now we have an idea about uh, 
the component, the diverse component of the New Brunswick. Uh, I'm going to introduce in a very brief, not the New Brunswick Public Library Service that includes 65 service points, 52 public library, 11 public school libraries, one virtual branch and one library service by mail. And all of them managed through five library regions and one provincial office actually where I'm working in Frederick. Now the question why diversity and inclusion in MBPL is children's book collection matters. So this slide is based on the previous slide where we explore the uh, New Brunswick diverse population. And this one is about people under age of 15. And as you can understand, of course, I'm taking this category because this is the target audience of children's book collections in the library. So 6% uh, of this category are people of color. 23.1% of the total indigenous population are aged 15 and under. And of course, uh, Black, Chinese, and Arab are the uh, three largest uh, diverse group in New Brunswick, beside, of course, the indigenous community. Okay, so this is uh, a brief overview about my uh, methodology and choice of case of study. Uh, so, of course, I, my primary, uh, primary source was Statistics Canada that uh, helped me uh, to get better idea of Canada's uh, population in general, but also most uh, importantly, uh, having a better idea about the diverse population in Canada and in New Brunswick. I also used uh, many other resources. I just listed some of them here. Uh, as a model, I choose the model that was developed by the University of Wisconsin, uh, uh, CCBC, uh, racial or ethnic identity tracking method by and about. Uh, I choose, as I explained, uh, the last three version of summer reading club book suggestion uh, from 2019 to 2021 uh, books as format and fiction and nonfiction. Uh, for the tracked diverse groups, I actually focus on the four largest BIPOC communities in New Brunswick, Indigenous, Black, Arab, and Chinese. And for other other diverse group, I uh, just put them under the category uh, POC others. Uh, and also I used a spreadsheet as a tool for my statistical and analytical tool. Uh, it's easier for filtering and having some analysis and graphics and charts. So this is a sample of my tables, uh, categories and criteria within which I uh, made my uh, analysis and reached my findings. Uh, as you can see, I have the uh, diversity subject, uh, diversity in the primary or main character, and also diversity of the author or the works creator. Uh, as I explained, I focused on indigenous, black, Arab, Chinese uh, as the main or the largest four diverse groups in New Brunswick. And then for others, I put them in as uh, unspecified uh, POC. All right, so this chart shows the variation in the percentage or the level of diversity representation 
throughout the three years or the three samples that I took for my uh, diversity uh, assessment. Uh, within the sample collection, the indigenous community, as you can see, is the BIPOC group that is most represented or reflected in the SRC book suggestions. Arab and Chinese are the least represented. For more details, uh, in three years, only 7% of book subject were covering indigenous uh, people, land or culture. Three were about black people, one percent were about Arab and unfortunately, zero percent were about Chinese communities. However, we have 10 percent of subject were covering uh, unspecified BIPOC groups and also uh, this percentage includes 24 percent of the subject that we're covering like uh, mythical creatures, uh, LGBTQ, disability, religion, uh, universal topics, etc. And of course, 55% uh, of subject were about a non-human character. Uh, for the diversity in the main character, it's pretty much similar. 52% of the main character were white people against 7% seven, seven were indigenous, five black, one Arab, and almost 0.2 Chinese. 8% of the main characters were unspecified uh, BIPOC. Uh, same for the author with much higher percentage of white dominance, 84% of works were created by a white author or illustrator, seven by an indigenous author, one by a black, one person were by Chinese and six percent and specified BIPOC. So as you can see for indigenous people, they own their voices. All books were written by indigenous, about indigenous and featuring an indigenous character, uh, which, is, which is great actually, which is excellent. Okay, so for my analytical review, this diversity assessment showed that the level of diverse representation in the last three version of the Summer Reading Club book suggestion was low. That's true. However, there are many factors or elements that really can affect in a negative way the level of diversity and inclusion in any library's collections and in the MBPLS uh, children's book collections. Summer Reading Club reflecting the SRC theme. Therefore, the diversity representation could be affected by the number of published books that represent or reflect diverse groups within the SRC theme. And if we take the example of this or this chart as example uh, for uh, diversity in subject between 2019 and 2021, you will see that indigenous, the percentage of indigenous representation was much higher in 2019 than in the two other years because uh, the published books or the number of published books related to environment issue were much higher than into uh, in the two other subjects, wellness and fantasy. And that's also, or uh, sorry, leads us to uh, this publishing 
landscape uh, that shows really that the publishing uh, or the level of diversity and inclusion in the publishing is not promising. And if the publishing uh, is not, uh, uh, is la lacking of diversity, uh, that for sure will affect in a negative way the diversity and inclusion in a library's collection. And this is what, what's happening actually in the uh, MBPL as children's book collections, because uh, the, uh, the library can only buy published, published books. And as you can see in the publishing landscape, the level of diverse representation is really very low. Looking also to this table. So through the 527 books that I checked and comparing to the BIPOC groups and their age, uh, and their, uh, the age of 15 in New Brunswick, I really believe that uh, MBPLS is headed in the right uh, direction to build an equitable uh, access to its collections and uh, build this collection that represent and reflect the diverse population of the New Brunswick. And I really know that uh, the MBPLS making a huge efforts uh, toward this uh, issue. And in fact, as you can see, uh, there have been since 25, uh, 2015, sorry, uh, significant investments to develop diverse and inclusive collections. Also building vibrant collections that are shaped by indigenous voices comes at the top priority of the uh, indigenous strategic plan. So I just wanted to finish uh, my presentation with these facts, uh, just to uh, to be fair uh, about the efforts that the MBPLS doing to build this equitable uh, access to its collections. Thank you, and please don't hesitate if you have any questions.